Hi, Ava. I'm going to start with your rough draft, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. I do want to say that your formatting is great. For some reason, though, when you look at your page numbers, your last name is only on the odd number pages. So can you go back to page number and reset that so that it's on all of your pages? Another thing, go ahead and just change that for the to the 13th. Um, a couple of things I wanted to go over here. The, the lead is not one of the four types that I told you about. And I want y'all to get into the habit of trying to lure your readers in for lack of a better verb and get them interested in your paper. So I would like for you to redo that. And I actually have done one. I don't want you to use it though. I, I'll tell you later how I found it, found out where to find one. Okay, so just read all of these con read all of the comments. Okay. But another one thing that I haven't told you is that, and I wanted to wait until now, make sure you have no contractions. Now, even if you've had a high school English teacher, they should have taught you that in a formal writing situation such as this, you don't use contractions. And so you might think, oh, wow, this is gonna be a pain in the neck. Not necessarily. What you could do is go up to edit and you go to find, and you in the box up in the top right-hand corner is where mine is you're going to type in an apostrophe T and then you're going to do a search. So obviously you're going to have to change that to is not. Okay, it found hasn't. And you'll notice as it goes through here, it highlights in yellow all of the ones. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Excuse me. Okay, maybe you didn't notice because I didn't do it right but it's pointing out all of them. You just hit enter. Now, did it get all of them? I don't know. You still need to reread and reread and reread. I do before you turn something in. So make sure you don't do that. Another thing is you are using the word I and you're using the word you. On week seven, I had a section with all of these different, I want to call them worksheets. You don't really work on them, but before you turn in your paper, you need to look at all of these different things. And one of them actually has a pronoun chart at the very top. And everything in white boxes is not, is not to be used in this type of paper and only in the yellow. So you can only use third person pronouns like he, she, it, they, them, their. And then you can use proper nouns and you can use regular nouns. That's it. You don't use I, you don't use we, you don't use you. Okay, not in this type of paper. So B, again, you could do a search. And that you'll find that very helpful if you put you at the top, it's going to find. And you notice that a lot of this that you wrote really doesn't need to be in there anyway. Okay, now you can also put I in, but this is the problem. It's going, every word that has an I, it's going to show you. So um, you could just reread it with a fine tooth comb or get somebody else to read it and see if you have any of those things there. Okay, so I'm going to leave you with this to read over. Um, I've rewritten this introduction and I wanted to show you that around, around here is probably where you should have your thesis. And I didn't see it at all in the first paragraph. So I had to go back to your noodle tools to see what you said. And this is what you said. 
So I'm going to use that in my revision of your introduction. Now, this is the one that I attached that's called Ava's Suggested Intro or something to that effect. And so I chose to use a quotation. Former President Bill Clinton once said, mental illness is nothing to be ashamed of, but stigma and bias shame us all, end quote. Indeed, the topic of mental health has long been avoided because most people probably do not know what it entails. As with most everything else, instruction on mental health and mental illness will lead to a greater understanding of the stigma. Education leads to understanding and understanding to action. That is why schools should make mental health awareness part of their curriculum. This is because it would promote each child's self-worth. It would give children or students the tools they need to be productive. And all of this would hopefully diminish the stigma and negative thoughts surrounding mental health and mental illness. So notice that I did incorporate your thesis there. Now, we need to make sure when we read that each of those paragraphs in the body with, you don't have to have the opposing part in there, but the three supporting points, you need to make sure that you have all of those covered in your thesis and that you didn't change ideas. Okay, so this is, done everything we want it to do is talking about it brings in a quote and even if you didn't live when bill clinton was president um, if you want to read some history about him and and why he was in, impeached uh he was quite a character quite a ladies man so he He's an interesting person, but people really did like him, and they do even now because he was charismatic about the way he talked and he drew people to him. So this is a good person. And of course, as president of the United States or even former president, you listen to what he says. So I, I brought in my reader. Now I am introducing my topic and then I'm narrowing it down, getting ready to punch my reader with the thesis. You know, education's the key to this. So we got to start as early as we can. And this gets us to there. And it didn't take a lot of sentences. Really, uh, introductions could be three or four sentences long and you can still have an effective one. Now, I went ahead and put the rest of yours in here too. So this might be like your, the one that had your original introduction and all that. I just wanted to show you how I would have possibly written this. Now, I do not have this Bill Clinton quote on my work cited because I used it in my introduction. Um, I could have used, there was a really good one on Tucker Carlson at Fox News. And when I was writing my paper on critical race theory, they actually have a quote in there where he said that he did not know what critical race theory is. And so I could have quoted that and then made the observation that he had been ranting on Fox News for weeks about it, talking about how horrible and evil it is, and yet he didn't even know what it was. So I could have used that, but that would have already been on my work side because I used that source for something else. But for something like just a quote in here, I would probably use a famous person 
uh, a writer. It doesn't have to necessarily be a president or a historian, but somebody who we would know. If I said Shakespeare, you would know. If I said Chaucer, you probably would know, but you'd probably want to look up who he was and why I would be quoting him on that. Robin Williams, most of us, unless we lived under a rock, have seen his movies and know how he makes us laugh. And you're familiar with the fact that he took his own life. That, that bothers me. Then we come to find out that he had a mental illness as in addition to other things that brought about that tragic end. So I would listen to those things. A lot of stars, a lot of athletes, male athletes are now coming out. You might want to quote some of them. I know there was a former cowboy who's come out in the last couple of years talking about his battle with uh, mental illness to try to get people to come forward and get help. Okay, off my soapbox. Okay, so I went to your noodle tools and remember where you put your outline in there and then drug your cards over there. This is when I print it out. This is what it looks like. I just go to sources. I go to print and I put in there that I wanted your source, your direct quote, your paraphrase and your ideas and this is what I've got. Your first main point was allows for self-growth. And each of these lines is the end of the card. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven cards under the self-growth. And then you have another category, successful kids. I guess that's the productive part. You've got one, two, three, four, five, under that one. Okay. And then your third main point is your opposition. And you have one, two, three, four, under that. Then your fourth is reducing the stigma. That's supposed to be your, your strongest main point. You have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so they're all pretty evenly distributed. But I think it's the way that they're distributed that causes the problem on the organization in your paper. And let me show you how I took your outline and I drug your own, I drug your cards into my outline. I want to show you which ones I used. And then I'm going to show you on main point one how I converted it from the outline into a paragraph. Okay, so this is the attachment that starts with converting. What I did, because I did not want to override what you had in Noodle Tools, so I just made a Microsoft Word document and just copied and pasted the cards that I wanted under each of the main points. So I believe, um, I believe I do have one where I've done all four. And I will send that to you separately. I have to find it. I hope I did not throw it away. I don't think I did. But what I've decided to do is I took your first main point about self-growth. Self and then I made a sentence that I could use as my topic sentence in this one that I'm showing you in my, my paragraph. Knowing what mental health education is and when to first start teaching it is essential in promoting 
a child's self-growth. Okay, so you can make these bigger if you want to, but these are from your note cards. I, I chose this one, this one, and this one. There are three of them. Okay, but as you'll see, I'm only going to use two. Now, I could put another one in if I wanted to, but let me explain why part's in black and part is in red. In this case, the black is my own words, the red is someone else's. So let's look at the red. Notice there's not as much because the red is supporting what I'm saying. The black is driving what I'm saying. You know, your thesis is a main, but think about it being your roadmap and your three main points are how you're going to argue your thesis. So you don't want to be even, even I guess it's, I don't know who it is. Tesla has done self-driving cars. And unfortunately, wealthy people, uh, I can remember one man who paid over $250,000 for his car was going down the tollway and crashed because he was letting it drive itself. Well, your paper's going to crash because the evidence or your support does not drive what you're trying to say, what your points are. You are the driver, your points. And the fact that it's called support ought to tell you that it has to be supported by something. And that is your ideas. Those are the black words in here. Okay, so it is, I, I can show you, I can add more things in there. Because I always think when I'm reading over my paper and reading over it and reading over it, I can think of things to add. Some of them are good. Some of them are unnecessary. I uh, just, I want kids to get out of the mold of, I've got to have so many words. You should be at the point now where you, you know you have four pages that you need to write. And with two examples like this, that should suffice to get my points across. I might want to add a little bit more later, but that's for when I revise and edit. Okay, so let's go down here. 24%, I'm sorry, 26% of the words are in red. That means they're somebody else's. You cannot, when you put your essay in safe aside, which you already have your rough draft, I think yours came out to 24, maybe 24, 26. As long as it's less than 40%, you're fine. What happens if it's over 40%, that that means that you are basically dumping data in there. You're putting your quotes in there and you're not telling me what your ideas are and how the text is supporting your points. Okay, so this one's good to do, go. So what I did is I took this right here and I said, knowing what mental ed education is and when to first start teaching it, I'd probably change that up some uh, and when to start teaching it. Probably I'd just take that out. It's essential in promoting a child's self-growth. Okay, according to an article about school-based mental health programs, in fact, it is called school-based, but, but, but there's more to the title. <coughs> so I just said this. The author states it is considered beneficial to provide education on children to children and adolescents of an early age. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Which will provide them with competencies that will increase their life skills and, and well life.
Now, notice several things. When you go back and look at your original, you put the quotation mark after the last word, but you do not put a period. You put a space, the first parenthesis, the name, and this is an et al, then a space. And then it's page 350 all the way to 361. I don't know which one it is, but you put in the correct number there. Close the parentheses and or the parenthesis, it's one of them, and then put a period. <clears throat> this is where schools play an important role because teachers can provide a safe environment where children are nurtured and made to feel free to express what they are feeling. If I really wanted to, I could add this one because I think it might enhance it that uh, just say most people would agree that children have few filters and that they will tell you how they feel and what they think without giving it a second thought. And there, there is a reason for that because it's the frontal lobe of your brain and it's not very well developed. It, it gets that way. Some of us, it, it still hasn't developed in our 60s. But for the most part, everybody else's does. Now, I wouldn't go into that, but that is the reason why. They will tell you what they're feeling. And in fact, it's surprising when they don't. And that might be a red flag. I don't know. Not a psychologist. All right. So then I said, they're in a safe environment, incorporating simple discussion questions that promote listening skills and empathy can arguably, uh, can arguably be more important than spelling, reading, and math. To be sure in the classroom, quote, the social component and mental health promotion strat. I'm sorry, my eyes are watering. Okay, the social component to mental health promotion strategies enhance the sense of our care, support, and belongingness. And then end quote, notice I have a space. I don't have a period. One parenthesis, I put that person's name. It's an et al also and put the correct page number. I will be checking because some of them you were putting like page one hyphen two and there was no hyphen, there was no page one or two in that article. So check your sources on your work cited pages. Make sure you put the correct page numbers down. Then you put a parenthesis and then you put a period there. Uh, what I wanted to tell you is that I could even put simple discussion questions. After that, I could, between this sentence that says math and to be sure, I could give an example. Uh, for example, asking a student what the what the their favorite part of their family is or what their favorite thing to do is and that's with little kids they can go a lot of places with that one a lot of them are going to tell you things that that let you know they don't like being in that classroom so some of them will say well the thing i like best to do is not be at school Okay, well, then that would open up discussions. Some kids will want to blurt out things, but that, again, is teaching them how to listen, how to respect others, and all of that. So start that early. I'm just telling you, you could give an example like that. Learning to engage in meaningful discourse and to respect what others have to say, whether they agree or disagree, is a positive step. So towards self-empowerment and self-understanding. At home, many students might lack physical, emotional, or mental support that is needed for their healthy, I, I probably should say mental or just healthy development because these are the three different kinds. 
That is where the school can provide at least a modicum of education that will help the overall well-being of their students. Now, I could have put some more things in there. Um, I probably wouldn't put, for a four-page paper, I wouldn't put more than two quotes there. But you should have plenty to choose from with your 40 cards. So that's how I converted this under this. So this is what I would have made the outline look like on my noodle tools. And I would have draw, dragged those cards over. And I would have probably left a bunch of them over there. The last thing I want to show you is your noodle tools and how you can make a work cited page. So let's see. Fortunately, you don't have that many. <laughs> Here's yours. Okay, it goes to your sources page. So that's that's really good. So you're already on your source page. You go to print export to word submit and this is what pops up it's already formatted for you now i attach this in a pdf you're going to have to go back to micro you're going to have to go back to noodle tools and copy and paste this onto your seventh page which leads me to this make sure that if this is still on there you take that off and then it should just default to the seventh page because you've already set your page numbers and all of that in the original document Okay, so this is good to go. Copy and paste that. Well, what do you know? I did find the revised outline and I didn't, I did put your research question and your um, main, main point, well, sorry, your thesis with your main points up here. This is the one I already did. I, and, and, you know, you can go in and put some different things in, but I'll let you use that. Now, having said that, the the highest you'll probably make is a 90 on it and that's if the other three are good if you want to get a hundred then it'd be better to have the um your own original one there now you can use the you could use the same what do you want to say main points and just change up the wording and then that would make it more your own and then you could get a 100, but if you're gonna do it verbatim, copy it verbatim, then the highest you'll get is a 90. Okay, so I keep going back and forth and making you dizzy. Uh, on this one, I went ahead and did it like I would have run a draft. You got your introduction, but that's separate. Here's your Roman numeral two, that's paragraph two. Here's your Roman numeral three, literacy and mental health, make young people more productive than those who are not. Uh, that's not worded very well. Uh, who? Do not. understand how important mental health is okay so then i could put that there i was still revising it literacy and mental health makes 
young people more productive. Okay, because basically we're going from this main point into the next. Okay, so that's the self growth. I might say while self growth is one of the great advantages well self growth is one of the great advantages is an offshoot of mental health literacy. Another trying to think of another word for advantage, uh, and I could just put that in there and, and highlight it, and then I'll know to come back and do a, a search. What I could do if I don't have time to do this right now, normally I don't do this when I'm first writing something. Um, But I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to review. And I should be able to go to thesaurus. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know what I'm doing. Okay. So I should be able to go to thesaurus. And look up another word. Okay. So here's gain plus another plus yeah thank you goodbye another plus to is that education makes more productive. Okay, so while self-growth is an offshoot of mental health literacy, let's say a positive offshoot of mental health literacy. Another plus is that edu this type of education makes young people why don't we say promotes productivity in young people and that probably would be better okay so That transition there, I'm bringing in the previous main point and I'm going with this. Now you can still use these sentences if you want to. That's not going to go against your grade. But um, anyway, so these are the ones that I drug over. I think I did three for each one. So I did one, two, three for productivity. Now you could use these or use other ones, but kind of pattern it after what, how I did the first main point. Then here's your opposition. Now I only drug two over. 
maybe there's another one. I'm not sure. But two should totally suffice because I think the main thing that you said in these cards, one person said it's a way for pharmaceuticals to make money. And another said something about it's too invasive uh, and it doesn't always work and all of those things. So anyway, I put, yeah, all right. So then the fifth paragraph, which is your third and strongest main point is how it reduces stigma. And you actually had several on stigma, but I drug these two cards over here. And then of course your conclusion, if you look at the anatomy of, an essay, you know that it begins with a restatement of your thesis and main points. So as it is, here this is, I'm going to attach this, I'm going to save it right now. And so if you would like a Zoom meeting, we can do that. If you want to work on that a little bit, now I'll look at it maybe two other times, but I can't look at it every day. So choose wisely for those two times between now and Sunday. Okay, so I, because unfortunately I have other people doing it and I can't be doing this all day long. Um, but I'd be happy to meet with you one of those times on Zoom. And I suppose that is it. So good luck writing. Uh, you've got a lot to work with with those cards you've got some excellent cards and uh, we'll talk with you later thanks bye